Hello everyone. Welcome to the premiere episode of The Savvy Report. I'm your host, Kristen Hale. We're excited you could join us for our inaugural episode of what we hope will be a long and rewarding journey for you, practitioners in the order to cash space, business owners, and entrepreneurs everywhere. Today we'll talk to the founder of Receivable Savvy and The Savvy Report, Ernie Martin. We'll also speak with Todd Albers, Senior Payments Consultant for the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. But before we get to our guests, let's see what's going on in business and order to cash. JP Morgan Chase and Bill.com are collaborating to deliver a simpler and faster way for businesses to send and receive invoices and payments. Scheduled to roll out in 2018, the solution will be seamlessly integrated into Chase's digital platform for businesses, what should simplify the banking experience and provide convenience via online and mobile devices. High Radius, the Texas-based integrated receivable solution provider has raised $50 million from Susquehanna Growth Equity to facilitate global growth. CEO and founder Sashi Narahari says the funding will help the company accelerate their platform to thousands of companies worldwide. The AFP Treasury and Finance Conference will be underway in San Diego, California from October 15th through 18th. Produced by the Association of Financial Professionals, the annual gathering of 6,500 plus is the place to be for treasury and finance professionals to address the challenges, trends, and innovations in the industry. Switching gears for just a bit, we're now joined by our first guest, the founder and managing director of Receivable Savvy and the creator of the Savvy Report, Ernie Martin. Welcome, Ernie. Hi, Kristen. The Savvy Report is an intriguing endeavor, but it's only one component of your business, Receivable Savvy. Can you tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind your company? Sure, absolutely. Uh, I started Receivable Savvy two years ago after spending a number of years in the order to cash space working for another uh, solution provider. And what I found was that on the accounts receivable side, there's a lot less information and focus compared to the accounts payable side. And so I also saw that on the supplier side, there are more choices being given to them. And so that was worth pursuing. And so I started Receivable Savvy in order to focus on two things, research and also best practice content for practitioners. And so what that looks like uh, for Receivable Savvy is we do an annual research study called the Perception Study. And the 2017 version is available. If you go to our website, you can easily download it at no cost. Uh, but we also provide uh, best practice content such as ebooks for early payment, for ACH payment, for invoicing, and for a few other things as well. And so we wanted to basically combine all of that information into a platform, provide it to practitioners on the accounts receivable space, which we thought was somewhat underserved. And uh, so now we're, we're seeing the dividends of that, and it's, it's paying off nicely for us. Now, can you tell me how the Savvy Report was conceived? Sure. The Savvy Report is just another way for Receivable Savvy to tell its story. So we, we tell our story in a number of different ways. Uh, we have a, a blog where we actually provide content ourselves, but we also have guest bloggers. And again, information that's helpful to practitioners on the order to cash side. Uh, we also leverage social media quite a bit as well. And so the Savvy Report, taking this, this sort of video platform, is another way to extend our message and to tell our story even further. So using the Savvy Report and some other shows, uh, we're able to do that. What can viewers expect from Receivable Savvy TV? So I think over the next few months, you'll see more episodes of the Savvy Report, but you'll also see video snippets of me uh, speaking at different conferences around the country. You'll also see highlights of some of our customers and other practitioners uh, via video. Uh, and so we want to, again, take that platform and tell our story, tell the story uh, of Order to Cash that includes us, practitioners, our clients, solution providers, as well as customers too. So, but we'll also focus on B2B business, entrepreneurship, small business, mid-sized businesses, and other things. So. You can sort of view Receivable Savvy TV and the Savvy Report as focusing on order to cash, of course, but we'll also focus on business in general. 
Well, Ernie, I'm sure our audience is excited about what we have in store for them. Thanks for joining. Thank you for having me. When we return, we'll speak to Todd Albers of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis about how the Fed is helping businesses solve the B2B payments issue. We'll be right back. Todd, thank you for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about what the Federal Reserve does in terms of its overall mission. Certainly, Kristen. So, as an ancient central bank, you know, we aim to support job creation, keep inflation low, and foster a stable financial system. We serve the public interest by working to promote prosperity for the people and businesses across America. So, our overall mission covers monetary policy, financial stability, bank supervision, payment services, and community engagement. From a monetary policy perspective, we promote maximum employment, price stability, and these are just the goals that were given to us by Congress. What this means is that we want as many Americans as possible who want jobs to have jobs and want to restrain the increase in the cost of living. So we pursue these goals primarily by influencing the level of interest rates and other financial conditions in the U.S. market. From a financial stability perspective, we strive to keep the financial market stable and working for creditworthy borrowers from individuals to businesses. We stand ready to make short-term collateralized loans to banks and can, in response, and you saw this in 2009, when severe financial strains lend, uh, we can lend to other financial institutions. You know, because the U.S. dollar is a global currency and the world's economies are inter interdependent, we work closely with the central banks and other public authorities around the world to help maintain you know, not only the U.S. financial stability, but also the global financial stability. Another important part of our mission is that we perform, perform uh, bank supervision. And through this role, we, along with other regulatory agencies, we oversee banks, other financial institutions, and the financial market infrastructure. We want to ensure that all of these different um, entities are operating soundly and that they treat their customers fairly. We also use our supervisorial authority to help guard against threats that uh, can pop up and the stability of the financial system as a whole. And so, um, so these are just a couple of areas from a supervision standpoint. Uh, another role that we play is an operator in the payment system through our Fedwire and Fed ACH services. We uh, reliably and safely process trillions of dollars of payments for uh, the nation banks, as well as the federal government. We also ensure that the banks in each of the 12 districts that make up the Federal Reserve System have an ample supply of currency and coins to meet the demands of, the, of their depositors. So we also help the U.S. Treasury manage its financial operations. And then finally, another important mission we perform is community engagement. And so each bank works across not only their district, but as well nationally uh, with the different communities, nonprofit organizations, lenders, educators, and others to encourage uh, financial and economic literacy, address housing problems, and also promote equal access to credit and advance economic and, and community development. Um, so, Kristen, I'm sure that was a lengthy answer to your question, but I think it's an important message to get out is that everyone hears um, the overall mission of the Fed. And it's more than just financial or monetary policy. There's also the Business Payments Coalition. Share with us a little bit about what that is and how it's involved in B2B payments. Oh, certainly. So a little bit about the Business Payments Coalition. You know, one, it's been around for a while. It was formed in 2011. Um, and what I think is unique about this group is that it's a completely volunteer group of organizations uh, from financial institutions to um, different software providers, payment service providers, uh, consultants, individuals, um, and, and really they're working together to promote greater adoption of electronic B2B payments and electronic document exchange such as invoice and remittance details. Now the Federal Reserve is involved with the Business Payments Coalition, Coalition as a way to engage the industry to collaborate on solving uh, these B2B transaction processing issues that cover the procure to pay to the order to, and order to cash areas. And what should we expect to see from the Federal Reserve and the Business Payments Coalition 
as it relates to businesses in the next six to 12 months? Tristan, it's a very, the next six to 12 months are gonna be very important from, a, from the Business Payments Coalition perspective. We have several initiatives that we're working on that address um, you know, some very major barriers that quite frankly haven't um, been solved yet uh, in the US market. And so um, you know, one uh, area that the, the group is gonna be working on or the coalition is gonna be working on is addressing issues related to uh, remittance advance uh, formats. Um, so work is gonna begin very shortly on developing a simple remittance advice format that can be used by all payment methods. And that's a departure from what's going on in the market today because each different payment method that exists has its own uh, format, if you will, uh, to send to the receiver of that payment. And so, again, one of these challenges of business face today is that they can receive these remittance advices in multiple formats for the various electronic payment methods that they receive, and that causes a significant barrier for electronic payment adoption because now they've got to uh, code to those formats, if you will, to automate the receivable side of the, of the payment process. And so the goal for this group is to come up with a remit, remittance advice standard that's gonna be simple, that's gonna be easy to use, and that again, it's payment method agnostic so that it can be used across all payment methods. Todd, thank you for joining us today. We'll certainly stay tuned with what's going on with the Federal Reserve and the Business Payments Coalition. To find out more about the Business Payments Coalition, visit www.fedpaymentsimprovement.org. I'd like to thank our guests today, Ernie Martin for sharing the vision around receivable savvy and the savvy report, and Todd Albers with the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis for sharing the mission of the Federal Reserve and the Business Payments Coalition. I'm Kristen Hale for the Savvy Report. We'll see you next time.